everyone welcome back to anime on draft episode eight uh today i am joined here with my co-host uh rolando hi and drew san that was creepy don't ever do that again <laughs> uh today we're gonna be switching things up a little bit a little bit so our our show progression is gonna be a little different so our pairing we're gonna change up and uh i know we uh have a drew's got a couple notes about last week's beer so before we do our beer, I'm going to throw it over to him right now to talk about some things he learned about the Orange Avenue wit that we talked about in episode seven. What's yeah, up? so I uh, I know I mentioned uh, before I, I've been to the the brewery, uh, the Coronado Island Brewery um, that, you know, brewed the beer that we talked about last week. But I ended up uh, being there uh, earlier today and uh, was talking a little bit to some of the bartenders and stuff like that. And uh, I was curious to see, you know, if there was any differences between, you know, me going out and buying a bottle of this beer like we did last week and then having them pour me, you know, straight from the keg and having them garnish it and whatnot. So they did, uh, we talked about it, uh, they did garnish it with a uh, an orange, and it was like a nice juicy, you know, slice of orange, and I mm. I was like, okay, uh, I, we were missing the citrus notes and stuff like that, but when you do squeeze that orange juice, like just a splash of it from the orange, or if you didn't have an orange, you know, a splash of orange juice uh, at home, and add that to the beer, it, it changes the beer dramatically, and it, it makes it so much better. Um you get all the citrus notes again you get the wheat uh that we kind of talked about and stuff like that so um just a, a side note on that beer from last week if you do end up going to try it please uh, do yourself a favor and garnish that sucker it uh it changes the flavor profile intensely and it, it makes it uh, an even better beer so just a just a heads up for that that's all i i kind of wanted to talk about in regards to that so Awesome. Nice. Um, so I remember last week you gave it a 3.75 as your rating. With the orange that you tried today, would it change your rating or is it about the same? It definitely elevates it. Um, again, I was kind of drinking it during the day and we kept talking about how refreshing it was and stuff like that. But y when you get those uh, higher levels of citrus flavors, uh, it really it really does enhance it. It makes it more crisp, more fresh and more drinkable. I think I would uh, with the orange peel, I I'd elevate it, you know, uh, a half a point higher, maybe uh, four point uh, two five uh, in that range. So definitely something to check out if uh, you were interested in trying the beer um, that we talked about last week. Definitely gonna have to try that. Go out, get myself an orange and uh, yeah, another yeah, bomber yeah. of that for sure. Um, Same here. All right, very cool. Well, today we've got quite a contrast from that beer. Uh, this one is definitely not citrusy at all. This one, this one, as I reach behind me to grab it, is it? It's a stout made by a, a New England brewing company. It's called the Zumbar Chocolate Coffee Imperial Stout. Um, I picked English. this. Oh, New English? What did I say? New England? Yeah. Oh, New England Patriots Brewing Company? No. <laughs> New English Brewing Company. Yeah, Zumbar Tom Brady has a stake in this coffee. one. Yeah, yeah. That's that's how you know it'll be uh it'll be good to throw at the wall. I don't know, dude. I don't know. Um <laughs> I I picked this beer this week uh purely because I like stouts, Imperial Stouts specifically, and the chocolate coffee sounded really good. Also, there's like a cool looking chocolate bar on the label and uh i was kind of hungry at the time and so it looked good <laughs> um, Dude, this smells like chocolate and coffee like all it does a lot of chocolate and mm -hmm. coffee. dude take take a drink of this because it is it is fantastic <laughs> mm. yeah that is very good it is like mm -hmm. so really good it's, so espresso, espresso y, mm -hmm. chocolatey, mocha y. It's just, it's, it's yeah. really good. <laughs> it's definitely like dark chocolate with like dark. It's like having a dark chocolate covered coffee bean almost. Or oh, something that, like that. that's mm. exactly what I was thinking too. And it's, it's, yeah, for sure, for sure. It's really good. So, you know, Tom Brady definitely did a good job. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, when did Tom Brady move to San Diego? I don't know. Dude. I don't know. <laughs> he, oh, yeah, oh sorry. Is, it's just his uh, San Diego house that he it's, has a brewer, mm, uh, mm. a brewing setup in. 
<laughs> so, you know, I'm going to talk a little bit about the, uh, the color. The, it's dark. Like, dark. You cannot see yeah. through. I see no carbonation. I do not see my hand on the other side of the glass. The, uh, the head is kind of like, you know, coffee color. But uh, it's like a creamy. It's kind of like a Guinness style head. Yeah. Um, and even uh, even holding it up to the light too, you can't see through this sucker. It is <laughs> it is pitch it is black. Dark, dark, yeah. <laughs> if and then like when we were talking about the peanut butter stout, I think I noticed it at the bottom, but there is a little bit of se- sediment. I think at the very bottom of the bottle. Maybe I yeah, I see a, I see a little bit down there, but again, it's it's a dark bottle with a dark beer, mm-hmm. so it's it's kind of yeah. I I can't see to, it right now. Yeah, <laughs> there's still some beer in the bomber, but <laughs> the uh, it's definitely not complex though. It, the the flavors are coffee, chocolate, and uh, that's and you know you get the typical like yeah. maltiness, coffee, chocolate, malt, smoke. Yeah. It's like roast. It, it's yeah. more roasty than toasty. People always, you know, they differentiate stouts with like roasty or toasty. Toasty is mm-hmm. like the brown stuff on toast and roasted is like if you were to burn like, the toast, it's, I guess. Yeah. It's it more makes roasty. sense because of the, the coffee elements make this mm-hmm. more, more roasty. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They Do have uh, either. Gr- hmm? Sorry. Sorry. They have like grounds uh, as well as the chocolate bar on the picture too. So, you know, they're obviously doing some sort of roasting process with these beans in order to kind of give it this great coffee flavor. So, so I got the bottle right in front of me. I'm going to, I'm going to read what it says on the back. I'm going to take Rolando's job this week. Um, go ahead and make a few more mistakes and maybe say some more, uh, random new England problems. Uh, anyways, a collaboration of flavor and passion. Zumbar chocolate coffee, Imperial stout showcases the deep mellow softness of real 72% cacao, Belgian dark chocolate. There's that dark chocolate guys. Cacao, skillfully, cacao. <laughs> skillfully balanced with Zumbar's handcrafted locally roasted coffee. There's that roasted flavor. El Mundo. That's the, the name, I guess. El Mundo, a blend of Indonesian and Latin coffees is combined with the chocolate and literally immersed in our silky smooth imperial stout. Literally immersed, not figuratively. <laughs> Artisan well, coffee roasters. Do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They're just like, no, it's immersed. It's just hovering <laughs> over it. <laughs> Artisan coffee roasters, Zumbar Coffee and Tea mirror the craftsmanship and dedication that we strive for here at New English, New English Brewing. As we are also neighbors, it seemed like a natural partnership. Chocolate, coffee, and beer. Also so, at the front of cool. the bottle, it, it says uh, the 2015 GABF Coffee Beer Gold Medal winner. So mm. it is a, an award-winning uh, beer here. So I can I can definitely see why. Great American Beer Festival. Huh. I think that's what it is. Yeah. And it is handcrafted nice. in San Diego. Very cool. This right is on. definitely um, going to get you pretty buzzing. Uh, it's a 9.3%. Alcohol shit, by I volume. Even, <laughs> I didn't even notice that. <laughs> um, I mm. just looked as well. Um, I assumed it would be high because it's a imperial stout, but 9.3. Um, so pardon us if by the end of this episode we're a little bit, um, we're making a few mistakes or, well, you or get things the, like uh, that. So. You get the caffeine from the beans too, kind of kind of heightening that... Uh, that uh you know drunken drunkenness and uh, things like that so we're gonna be uh rambling by the end i hope uh, yeah so we'll we'll try and keep this shorter (laughs) than it's gonna happen shorter than an hour and a half (laughs) (laughs) three hours later we're so sorry guys this is the longest episode we've ever done um all right well you know let's go ahead and let's let's rate this bad boy up um what do you you know what 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 are the what do you what do you think you guys want to give it let's start with drew (laughs) Oh boy. Um, definitely drinkable. Um, great color, great flavor profile. Um, as far as the stout goes, it's, it's very good for me. Um, I don't know. This is tough. Cause it's, I, I can see myself drinking it, but I know that like by the end of the podcast, I'm going to be sick of it. Cause it, it does have that sweet coffee flavor. Um, but I'm like, when I'm drinking coffee, I'm more of like a one cup kind of guy. So drinking an entire bomber of this might be might be a little much, um, but I'll hold my reservations till the end. Um, but overall, as a rating, I'll give it a uh, three point two five. It's it's good. It's uh, pretty drinkable for what it is. Uh, super great flavor, but 
I can see myself getting sick of it after drinking it for a while. Um, so Fair that's enough. my great, that's my gripe with it. Fair enough. Mm. I'll throw it back to you at the end of the episode and see how you're feeling about it. <laughs> well, <laughs> Rolando, what do you think? By the end, so. <laughs> <laughs> You'll be like, it's great. <laughs> uh, so yeah, what I like, a lot of things I like when it comes to stouts, um, is when they go simplistic and this is a very straightforward, simplistic combination, chocolate, coffee stout literally infused like they said um i like i like it it's it's good you get the roasty notes you get chocolate notes you get coffee notes all things that i like um in terms of stouts this is up there with um that peanut butter stout and the cappuccino stout from lagunitas so i'm gonna give it a four and a half um i would say just due to the simplicity and how just well balanced the flavors are four and a half is a good combination and i am interested to try more stuff from new english and as well uh zumbar because um i am a big coffee fan i am not like drew who only drinks one cup of coffee it's <laughs> it's probably bad but <laughs> It's fine. Caffeine is right. good for you. You get good beans, and it's antioxidants, dude. It's gonna keep you young forever. No cancer. You're gonna live forever because you drink coffee. It's just yeah, coffee and tea. It's can't, fact, dude. Can't, it's, can't keep me away from that. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, yeah, that's uh, probably around where I'm gonna sit. I was thinking four and a half, four point seven five. Um, like I said before, the or in our first episode, the uh, the peanut butter stout from uh, Belching Beaver is one of my favorites. Um, this is definitely, I think, tied now for one of my favorites. I can't say it's better, or I can't say the other one's better, or this one's better, because one is peanut butter, it, like, hardcore, and this one's more like coffee uh, chocolate. But mm-hmm. this actually beat out the Lagunitas Cappuccino Stout for me. Um and so I'm going to have to, I'll, I'll probably give this a four and a half. Um, just, uh, no, you know what? I'm going to give it the 4.75. I'm going to give it the highest rating I've ever given on this show. This is delicious. Damn, Go out and buy it. I would drink three of these if it weren't 9.3% alcohol by volume. Um, it's, it's bomb, dude. If you like stouts, if you like Imperial stouts, if you like coffee and chocolate, this is for you, man. And if you can get it, I recommend getting it. ASAP and trying it because it's delicious. So there, do we, boom. Do we know if uh, if New English uh, ships to other locations other outside of San Diego? I do not. Uh, I'll look it up after we're done, and I'll post about it in a blog post on. Uh, okay, cool. On WordPress. So keep awesome. a lookout for that. More information regarding this delicious, delicious beer. So. <clears throat> but from here, let's uh, let's go ahead and uh, we'll move on to our first segment um, of anime. This is you know the 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 first pairing, well, seventh eighth pairing. Um, today we're gonna su- number eight. We're gonna switch it up a little bit. The ocho. <laughs> normally, I was to say the, ocho. <laughs> <laughs> the serpents. Um, <laughs> normally we talk about Attack on Titan and the soccer request. Uh, today we're gonna go ahead and throw Attack on Titan into happy hour because not really that much happened there isn't really that much to talk about and i know my two co-hosts here definitely have a few things they would like to say about Aramanga sensei there's some triggering happening uh going on with the with these two so uh i'm gonna since since you seem to be want to be vocal about this drew i'm gonna throw this over to you uh you know what triggered you about this episode or do you have any questions you want to throw to us you know (laughs) What's up? Um, I'll I'll just I'll jump right into it. Uh, a couple things that I wrote right off the bat. Um, we met this Muramasa Sensei last week, and the first thing that I wrote about her this week is that she is a spiteful bitch. Um, <laughs> I wrote she's annoying. She's 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 unbelievable like so uh, we have this new you know contest of uh, a short story writing where you know new fucking new uh authors are supposed to submit their their work and have it judged and then you know they get a spot uh in an upcoming uh publication or whatever it happens to be uh and so you know she she as well as masamune just decided like we're both going to enter this because you know we can you know for whatever reason (laughs) 
And so we have this like new conflict created and then, you know, the episode progresses and stuff like that. We'll kind of get into it. Um, I wrote again, a feels bad man uh, for all the other young authors because they don't stand a chance. It's like, yeah, I want to throw it out there real fast. (laughs) They show the results at the end and it's like 2000, 2000, 1600 and then like 500, (laughs) 400. I'm like those poor, poor souls of against actual professionals. Yeah, it's like give these kids a break. Like they're trying to get their own break and it's just like these two highly published well, one, authors one super highly regarded and then the other you know somewhat highly regarded uh authors are just like battling against each other out of spite and it's just like get these guys a break feels fucking bad man <laughs> you know um but anyway um so we we get masamune battling against uh, miramasa you know he's gonna revise his little sister novel into this you know short story format so him and uh, yamada elf sensei kind of go into uh, training mode and uh, get that stuff done. Um, a couple of other funny things that I wanted to point out uh, <laughs> was uh, Muramase calling Yamada Sensei uh, Yama Shit Sensei and like all these like plan <laughs> words and stuff like that. So that was that was pretty good. I felt bad for Yamada though because she's she's an awesome character. Um, but but yeah, you know we get this kind of uh, progression, and then she ends up uh, Muramasa ends up showing up at the house, and she's like, "Well, I wore this schoolgirl outfit for you. You know, my <laughs> editor said you might like it." And then I'm just like face falling. I'm just like, "What is this turning into?" And then she she ends up you know writing her entry as like a love letter to him, and just like Rolando said last week, and I'll throw it over to you, Rolando, after this. But uh, it ended up that she's like, "I only write my novels because your novels were." so good and if you start writing a little uh a uh, little sister uh slice of life anime or slice of life manga i'm gonna Romantic be so mad and it's thing. just like well who didn't see that coming <laughs> you know um there's a million other things i want to talk about but uh rolando i know you uh were triggered by some of the events in here so i'll, yeah. I'll throw it over to you <laughs> throw it over to you yeah co- going off of what you were mentioning, what I was saying last week, I actually have a bullet point that I wrote down that says, I don't really like that I was right that she is his fan because this is a dumb development. And um, that's kind of going to be what I'm talking about for for this uh, for this episode in particular. Um, yeah, I Muramasa's character just comes off as like super annoying. What I didn't like mm-hmm. about this is this plot development reminded me a lot of another show that has a Masamune in it that uh, <laughs> you guys are so familiar with. So if you, I watched that one recently. <laughs> if you uh, recall Masamune-kun's Revenge, um, there is the whole development that happens during the school festival arc where the fat quote-unquote Masamune that <laughs> Aki thinks is Masamune um, shows up and is just like, basically they're just to be conflict he's just kind of thrown in there and it's poor like in my opinion poor writing um and like i have it written down it's just like it's throwing a character in there to further the conflict and what's annoying about it is there's not really any need for this conflict so it feels forced and that's exactly how i feel about this whole comp this writing competition like yes it's their way of bringing this new character in but it doesn't it doesn't feel like it flowed naturally like the rest like the previous episodes you know i feel like well, to go yeah go ahead sorry to to go off that really quick it's like we also had this conflict thrown in where it's like uh sagiri and masamune can't live their same life together all of a sudden because he's not going to be publishing stuff cuz the aunt says you can't live together or whatever that was just kind of thrown in there too and it's just like okay i guess like that's you know, one way to look at it or whatever you want to say, but it's just like, it feels everything, every kind of conflict in this show feels so forced. It's just like, here, this is how it's going to be, you know, hold that and then, you know, move on. And, and these conflicts are getting resolved so easily too, because, you know, by the end of the episode, um, you know, we, we get here, we see that, you know, Masamune ends up winning the competition. Um, and the only reason he won was because Miramasa gets disqualified for writing way too much, <laughs> which is stupid also. Because she was um, writing a love yeah. letter. That's she was writing her yeah. love letter to him. 
Yeah. Exactly, exactly. And it's just all this conflict and these forced, like, harem characters just, like, getting, like, uh, imposed upon, you know, Masamune. It's like, I get that that's what the genre is, but at the same time, they could do a little bit better development because when we had our first conflict, it was with Elf Yamada. And within an episode, she's fucking enamored with him. It's like, I'm going on a date, posting on Twitter, doing all this stuff. And she's, you know, involved with helping him and all this stuff. She goes from being super Sundere to, like, I really like him and there's this new bitch in here and I had to compete with her and then I had to compete with Sagiti who's also I'm 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 getting sorry this is going off more but I'm getting less and less enamored with Sagiti because she is not that great I mean she's she's (laughs) cute and she does like cute things every once in a while but she stays in her room and she draws pictures and she left she she left left her room And yeah. for some reason, well, she seems to struggle with walking. Some some I'm some cat was peeing all over her her territory, <laughs> and so she came out, and the claws were out. Is it yeah, just me, or does she seem to struggle with walking though? Stairs <laughs> seem to be an issue. She was like, "Oh, I, I I'm a baby, my first legs. learning to walk. <laughs> my legs. My legs. <laughs> That's the image I got. I was laughing the whole time she was having her like, "I'm gonna yell at you because I'll never lose him to you." I'm like, "Well, you're gonna lose him." To her because you can't even go up and down stairs, girl. I mean, come yeah, on. you can't even chase after him. <laughs> <laughs> He's gonna walk yeah. out the house and you're stuck in there. <laughs> and it just it just goes back to show just like all this forced conflict and just like this nonsense. It's just like I I don't I don't know what do you, <laughs> what do you have? For yeah, in, in particular, it's what what I don't like about it is. They didn't really have this issue in Ori Emo. And so it's not necessarily it's not necessarily like the author can't do it. It's just that I feel like he's trying to be too different from Ori Emo, but at the same time, like, dude, it's it's the same genre, it's the same type of story. We know like what to expect. And so can I when you can I butt in yeah. real quickly with that too? He's not even trying to be different. Do you want to know what the light novel was called that he wrote or the short story that he called was 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 called in the anime? It was called yeah. The World's Cutest Little Sister. It's like yeah. fuck me, dude. Like, I wrote, come I wrote up, that down too. Come up with something original. <laughs> it's yeah. like you it is like we said the <laughs> other week. It's like he is literally writing Oriimo through Masamune and Sagiri. Like, so that they can fulfill their goal well, of watching Oriimo on their fucking couch together. <laughs> well, they had they had two references to to that work. So we've got Muramasa's story, which is called My Not-So-Cute Kohai. Yeah. Which, which yeah. is, like, kind of, you know, like, the little standoffish um, point of view that you would get from, like, Oriimo. And then you've got The World's Cutest Little Sister, which... Is actually, if you think about it, um, my little sister can't be this cute versus the world's cutest little sister. It's like this one is accepting that the sister is cute. Whereas if that if they yeah. fucking combine the two of these, if Muramase and Masamune combine these, I'm I'm gonna be so mad. Like <laughs> Oh my god. I'm gonna I'm going to be so bad if that happens. Like, it's like, are you fucking kidding me? Like we're, we've already come full circle, but let's go, you know, another 360 on top of that, you know, get it, get ourselves a 720 of juxtaposition and just like, be like, Hey, you know, hold this. This is just Oriimo. Got you guys. Like, Hey, you're making me famous over the same shit. Over Did you and guys over ever again. think that maybe Oriimo and this, uh, anime are really just the author's love letters to his own little sister. Maybe I wouldn't doubt just, it. <laughs> that's just weird. Um, I just I don't know. There's a lot of weird things that just in particular kind of got to me this episode. But like in in particular, um, Muramasa just kind of grinds my gears a little bit. Because her character doesn't really make sense to me. No, it doesn't to me either. I agree. She's got too much going on. Like she has this like little bit of yandere going on where she's like about to close the door. (laughs) (laughs) She's like she's going to close the door. Exactly, exactly. (laughs) It's like and and then she and then she goes back and she pulls it back in and she's like, Well, it's like I'm confessing to you, like 
ha- like uh, acknowledge my love and he's like well I love somebody else and you're just like face palming you're just like this is smooth scale all over again this is uh, he's gonna choose the worst shit girl and I'm just gonna be mad and I'm gonna close my internet browser and just sit in the corner and be like why do I watch this because I know what it's gonna be and <laughs> it just ends up being the same thing over and over and over again but I don't know. She's she's annoying. Um, she's a better character than Sagiti, I think. I don't know if you guys uh, agree with that. Debatable. I think she is. She's both, more annoying than Sagiri, annoying. but she has more personality than Sagiri, so to me, she's less boring than Sagiri. I don't really like she can, of them. She can walk. She I mean, can walk, that. yeah, that's true. <laughs> she can change out of the same outfit. Unlike his sister, who just wears PJs. The same PJs, I might add, all the time. Yeah. And the same jacket. <laughs> um, I think I took a, a little different of a, opinion, probably because I haven't seen Aura Emo. I, the, so she annoyed me. Uh, what was it? Um, Muramasa. She annoyed me, for sure. I was like, God, you're annoying. Just shut up. But uh, <laughs> I still liked her a little better than his sister. Um, I, I kind of just remember this episode more for the funny moments. So I was I I found it funny when uh, Yamato was telling Muramasa in the elevator. Well, I have more than a million uh, sold copies, so I can say whatever I want. And then Muramasa turns it back on her and is like, "Well, I have fourteen million. She's like, "If if you have more Bitch. than a million, you can say whatever you want." And the girl was <laughs> Yamato was like, ah, "Just like crying in the corner." So, y- Yamato is Yamato is saving this show because she's actually a good character. She, yeah, like, I actually like her character the best. She's. Really she funny. has she has the best portrayal of emotion. She has good comedy. Um, mm-hmm. She's has a cute character design. Um, all of the above. She she is what is the saving grace for and me for this show. She's yeah. also like the smartest character in yeah. in the the series. Because mm-hmm. whenever other people like she's sitting there trying to tell him like all this stuff, and she's like, if you don't just tell it to him, he's not gonna understand what you're talking about. He's an idiot. And what so she, she's yeah, like she's the only person. Who, that's the thing. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. What she reminds me of is a smart Aqua. Like she has the kind of king quirkiness <laughs> that Aqua has. Um, the same, you know, weird <laughs> habits and stuff like that. But um, but she's not. You an know, idiot. at the end of the day, Aqua's. Yeah, I mean, Aqua's an idiot, but she's very genuine. Um, and so you know, she she has those genuine qualities to her, and she's honest, and um, she's more honest with herself now. You know, she started off as this real sundry character, but at the end of the day, you know, she she's pretty honest with herself. She's honest with Masamune, um, and it, it it just makes for a good character. She she's written extremely well, um, and I I really enjoy her for for that for sure. I liked the uh, scene at the cafe, or whatever where. I, was that was that this episode where where they went on their date or was that, that was, last, that was we, last the week before, that was last yeah. week oh because i watched both today so i'm getting them mixed up anyways i did like that scene though that scene was funny when he was saying like oh you're you're like this and then she's like no i'm not my fans are just i'm not gonna be <laughs> around them and then she's like oh shit <laughs> kind of yeah kind of <laughs> proving his point and stuff like that yeah, yeah. exactly so Wait, it, she she has good moments like that so i have a question drew do sure. you is it just me or are there like just a gratuitous amount of like butt and boob shots of Sigiri? Yeah. Well, yeah. Tons. I mean, but that's, like, that's what the- I don't, I don't think that they even did this much in Ori Emo on. They on, definitely didn't, but at the, this was, this was, Ori Emo was the first of this genre, unless I'm mistaken, but the first big um, type of, of this genre. And so they had to be a little bit more conservative. And at the end, they were getting more and more loose with their kind of thing. They were say they, you know, we had the the marriage scene between the brother and sister and all that, all that good stuff. But I, I'm not going to get into that. We talk about too much Ori, Ori Emo on the segment to begin with. Um, but it, as anime has evolved, because that shows what, like five years old now, six years old, yeah, somewhere around old. there. Um Anime has has definitely progressed. Um, you know, we have it's fine now to show girls kissing girls um, on mainstream uh, media. Uh, less less uh, BL stuff uh, in the mainstream, but there is some of that stuff now too. But it's it's becoming more and more mainstream to be able to show that kind of stuff in prime time, and uh, especially for like a hit anime that is arrow manga. So there, there is a lot of that. Um, I, I can argue and say that Yamada has a couple scenes that are, you know, kind of gratuitous like that. But at the same time, you know, Yamada's not pulling down other girls' pants, uh, fucking panties 
in the middle of an episode <laughs> or, you know, asking like, oh, she's not paying attention. You know, uh, Muramasa is not paying attention. You know, can you just lift up her skirt for me right now? It's just like it's, it feels so forced. Did you, do you agree with that? Yeah, but like I feel like with 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 Elf, whenever there's like some weird fan service thing, it's it's just like this random joke that they put in. Uh-huh. And where like, you know, like last week where we're like. He walk, Masamune walks in and she's like holding up her skirt and it's just like mm-hmm. what the fuck but uh, <laughs> uh, the stuff I'm talking about is you're having a conversation between Masamune and Sagiri and all you there's just these random close ups of like Sagiri's chest yeah. or yeah, yeah. Sagiri stands mm-hmm. up and we just see her butt and it it's happened just like, yeah, this episode I, I, yeah where I, she I get was what you're saying. talking to her brother and she's like, oh, we're going to do it together. And she went to go stand up and all it did was just like show her ass while she stood up and then kept showing her butt. Yeah. I'm like, what are you showing? Anyways, it's, it's like it's an almost... eight year old girl. First of all, that's weird. <laughs> Second of all, she doesn't even have a butt. Like there's nothing. It's just pajamas. <laughs> so I don't even know like what they're trying to show. Yeah. So it's not even what's your service? What's your, what's your, it's like almost all the scenes when they're in the room together and it's just like random, like, yeah. oh, her pajamas are kind of loose and you see her belly button and going up to like her chest line and you don't see everything, but it's like, it's implied. Is that, is that kind of what you're, you're getting at there? Yeah. It's the stuff that they're, that they're, they're not necessarily pointing at it, but they're pointing at it by just putting yeah. it in it's, front of you. I think putting it's just in like an artistic direction and, I, and I'm and i gonna go ahead and say that the uh, light novel author has a lot to do with uh, the writing or the direction of this anime because he had a lot of uh, a lot of things to do with or emo as well um, and then again what I was saying, you know the, the evolution of anime and you know becoming a little bit more racy, more etchy, whatever you want to say um, so I think it's a combination of that and it's just like, you know, you go on Reddit or you go on any of these like uh, Pivx forums, um, Jailboro forums and stuff like that. And you see those same type of positions um, that the fans are drawing. And so it is something that people want to see. So I, I, I get why they do it. But again, it, it feels very forced. It's it's almost a little too much. And it's just like, OK, there's Sigiri's butt again. You know, let's move on. Like I've come to accept it at this point. Yeah, I don't know. It's for me it just feels a little bit a little bit out of place at points and also in particular just because of like Sigiri is what like 12 or something it's, just, it's not yeah. it's not yeah. cool. Um it's a little weird. <laughs> it's it's just I don't know. It it always is just for me if you make the viewer feel uncomfortable like it's either two things. They're uncomfortable, like, for a reason, and, like, you're supposed to feel uncomfortable, like, to kind of lead you somewhere. And then there's feeling uncomfortable because... Because it's, it's a 12-year-old just... and they're showing your butt? Yeah. like, <laughs> And I'm not a pedophile? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I'm just, like, I don't... I'm not in for this, like, sexualizing of, you know, preteens and all that, all that crap. That's just, you know... Kind of Unfortunately, weird. I think you're in the minority there. Um, all right, all right. That's 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 why this show is so popular. Fair um, enough. It 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 thrives off of that sort of thing. I mean, it is normal for people our age to say, "Yeah, that's fucking weird." Like, <laughs> why why are you doing that? But at the same yeah. time, it's it's what the viewers want to see, and that's why we're getting more and more anime like this. I'm sure there are also a lot of people in the same age group as the characters. So for them, it's probably not as weird. It's kind of like when you're watching a TV show as a kid and one of the characters was like, you know, cute to you and you go back and you're like, I remember that thinking they were cute. Now it's just kind of (laughs) weird. But but I don't know if we want to (laughs) be, I don't know if we want to be telling, uh, you know, our T or like our high school teens and all that to, you know, go for like fucking preteens. That's just kind of weird. Well, and this is, this is kind of going off on a tangent a little bit, but, um, for the most part, sexuality in Japan is very like frowned upon. Like you're supposed to go to, especially that age, you're supposed to go to school. You're supposed to get good grades. You're supposed to get accepted to college or whatever. Um, you know, Asian parents and things like that. You're not dating until, you know, you're out of my house and then you kind of, they force it on you. So this is a kind of an escapism sort of deal. It's like, you're not supposed to express it 
in everyday life. So you can go home and kind of um, watch, you know, this show and you can express that sexual frustration or that sexual desire without having to do it in a public forum. And that's more acceptable over there. So I think that's kind of where, you know, U.S. kids versus uh, Japanese kids, especially in the high school range, uh, where these characters are kind of set in. It's an escape, uh, an escape for them uh, to be able to express their sexuality and stuff like that without having to go into public and do it. Because again, it's not super accepted over there. Whereas here, you know, you're you're like, go to prom, you know, you can go out on right. dates, you know, you have a little bit more freedom as opposed to there. It's like study, do well in school, get a good job. Um, so different, <laughs> different, uh, you know, views of life and different cultural aspects that come into play here, I think. And again, it allows for that escapism, which is, you know, a lot of times those kids crave. Fair right. enough. It's fair, but yeah, uh, I can I can understand. Like yeah. I I see where you're coming from, and it makes a lot of sense. It does. I in particular, just for me, it's uncomfortable and just feels like unnecessary fan service. And I know I'm sure there's a lot of people that feel the same way, but yeah. it's just kind of weird. Whatever, yeah. it's their it's take a on weird, it. But... Like, but like I'm not gonna keep re- you know railing on him for it um i right. will say that the whole scene with sigiri yelling and all that crap was kind of just weird ass melodrama <laughs> it was a little cringe for me but you know yeah <laughs> anyways we should uh definitely keep an eye on next episode to uh see if it's a little less uh triggering than this one it's please, I'm personally please gonna don't look have forward. them combine their fucking books. Please, please. <laughs> we we just gotta look out for more of Elf Yamada Sensei's antics and, you know, yeah. pay attention to those because they're the highlight Fo- focus of on all that, the episodes. Because yeah. <laughs> she is definitely the best character. I like the uh, I like the editor as well. She's kind of funny. Um, yeah, she's goofy. Even, you know, she rarely really shows up, but when she does, she kind of le- does some funny things. I am slurring some words here. Yeah. Um, so, anyway. This is that we're drinking. It is, yeah, and I'm almost quite, done with quite the whole so. bomber. So. All right, <laughs> Damn. no more, no yeah. more air manga. Yeah, let, so I'm gonna move on here, and uh, let's go ahead, and we're gonna go talk about uh, Soccer Quest, and uh, well, basically the episode this week we kind of had another resolution of one of the, um, what are they, what are they calling the girls again? The um, the ministers. ministers. Yeah, we had yeah. the the another minister resolution of the ministers kind of internal, you know, quarrels and issues that she was having. And personally, I thought, again, as they did with the previous one, I thought they actually did a pretty good job with it. Um, the resolution felt it didn't feel like we were talking about era manga. It didn't feel forced to me. It felt like it kind of reached a natural, uh, you know, conclusion. I guess. Uh, what you guys? What did you guys think? Did did it feel forced to you, or did you enjoy the episode? It was good. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you want to start, Drew, but uh, I I started Era Manga to so go for it. I'll uh, I'll follow up. Okay. Um. Yeah. Uh. In particular, in this episode, we see Maki finally, pretty much make up her mind. Right. She mm-hmm. was unsure before whether she wanted to continue acting or not, but this episode, we find out that yes, she's passionate about acting. We find out that she knows a lot about it in how we have Ririko who's kind of poorly thrust into this situation where she has to take (laughs) the, the extra role that shaking. Yeah. That, uh, (laughs) that Maki was supposed to take. She's so precious. Like how could they do this to her? Yeah. Like, (laughs) and they're they're yelling at her so bad. It's like, she's thrown (laughs) into the situation and she's just like super nervous. And like, she's worried about sucking and, um, (laughs) She's like a very like <laughs> soft spoken girl as well. So like you just feel really bad for her. But Maki just walks up, tells her exactly what she needed to do, which is just be natural. Don't worry about being ha- putting on a good performance. You just have to pretend you're someone else and just don't worry about anything else. She does it. They're OK with it. It's not the best acting ever, mm-hmm. but she's just an extra character. She's not the lead actress in this film. All is good. One scene. Well. Yeah. Just one, <laughs> we we one have scene. to we have to remember, and they say this kind of near the end too. This film is nominated for a Razzie. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> so it it yeah, is it is not supposed the, to be the, old the best film ever. <laughs> yeah, like it's also just 
so many things like the whole thing with the the fire scene that Maki finally steps in after realizing she like wants to keep acting. She mm-hmm. like steps in. She's like, "I'll be your double for to Moe." Like, mm-hmm. I'll fucking run towards this Into burning house. Yeah, this burning house. <laughs> and then the first things that popped in my mind were one, this production. I'm sure does not have the insurance to cover whether she gets hurt or not. So she <laughs> dies. Totally. Yeah. She, she and her estate can totally sue them for everything they have Two, I don't know what the whole situation is with like unions and stuff over in, in Japan, but I'm pretty sure this is like not okay. Um, I'm pretty sure like, whatever like acting union over there would be like you just threw a random person in who doesn't have a contract (laughs) into a dangerous situation and two like normally like in those situations you have to put preference towards the like if the main actor is going to do it you have to put a preference towards like a certain like stunt double like from like a certified group and so Mm -hmm. I understand it's anime and it's not going to be completely but the, realistic. The, the director would then go, you know, the, the, the script is always evolving. Oh, like, yeah. Some yeah, stupid shit a, like that. He's a space cadet. <laughs> the, but- <laughs> the director was fucking so dumb. I loved him, dude. He was the best. He was so funny. I was like, this guy is ridiculous. I swear, he made the past two episodes for me. The guy was he's, great. He's too much. He's yeah. too much. Him and the look- old man. Him and the old man were great in the past two mm-hmm. episodes. Well, not Mm. Not necessarily in this episode. The last episode, when he was throwing himself around as a zombie, th- those were really good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what do you think, Drew? What do you think? Um, a couple things that I wrote down quickly that I thought were funny before we kind of talk more more serious notes. Um, when they were getting the uh, the mini zombies or like the kid zombies or whatever, they're all in the gym, and um, we <laughs> yeah, we had the scene where like Sonai gets like spanked. And they're, like, yeah. Fat oh ass, yeah, that's fat ass. the kid runs up and slaps <laughs> her on the ass. Like, dude, he gave her a good full palm. That was a loud like, yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, he, he probably he probably grabbed a, a little chunk of there yeah. in there too. You know, a little fucking. <laughs> crazy ass kid but then they all start chanting like fat ass like they kept, whatever he yelled he was like um uh he says something so he was like four eyes big butt and then all the kids yeah, are going big butt big butt and she's like covering her butt and then you see riri in the back covering her butt kind of like sidling out of the room like ah, I'm yeah gonna she's get like she's here. like she's like guys i don't i didn't don't i don't do well with children <laughs> she like she like backs she up pieces. and like runs away yeah. i felt so that, bad that, for her for her <laughs> sanai because she's just and like she's, trying to be yeah. like the, you know the the grown up in the room yeah. and then she just gets <laughs> fucking slapped on the ass <laughs> And then she's just like blushing and can't like do anything. Yeah. Moe comes out like, hey, let's have fun. They're like, okay. And she's like, you little brats. Like, I (laughs) hate you. That was, that was, she's never having kids. It ruined it for her. That was a super tight scene. Um, the other scene I, I I didn't really like was that cheesy ass flashback um, with Maki and the the English singing and like going through. Oh her, yeah, like, I typed that English the song <laughs> in my notes. I wrote. Yeah. I wrote cheesy ass Maki flashback with English music. Like <laughs> what? Yeah, yeah. It was a little bit. It was. Uh, it was so out of place because we haven't had anything in the anime like that before. And like, I get the, I get the, uh, the sentiment behind you know having a flashback showing her love and her progression through her art. Um, you know, from a little kid to now. Um, and her like coming like and thinking like oh yeah I do actually love all this but it's just it was done in such a fucking cheesy way that I was just like yeah. I'm gonna go look at this tree and sway and like that's <laughs> my first role and I'm just like oh god yeah, <laughs> yeah but, the flashback um, was a bit much what uh more uh, more on the topic of uh, important uh, things that I want to talk about um we have like this uh, Yoshino and um. Uh, Shiori. sorry, what's her name? Uh, Shiori. Shiori yeah. uh, Yoshino and Shinori conflict where they're having this debate about, you know, Yoshino calls the estate owner and they're like, can we burn this bitch down? And they're like, yeah, I told, you know, that other girl that we could do that, you know, so long ago. And In she's person. Like, what? <laughs> she's like, wait, it's her uh, face. Yeah. <laughs> and so she they have this huge... <laughs> And then, so they have this huge fight, and it was brutal. So, like, yeah. what Shiori says to Yoshino, she's like, <laughs> Yoshino's like, you know, this, 
<laughs> he's like this is like this is a house like you have to like ha- share the memories of it but you can move on you know there's more things to happen to it and she goes like how can you even say that when you abandon your hometown and she just like walks away and you're yeah, just like drop Mike, the mic drop drop that Mike. whole Mike, that whole Mike fight drop, was ruthless like. from the start though because Yoshino <laughs> is like you can't keep living in the past like insulting her for like being yeah. stuck on the house and then there's like a pause it was a it was a good pause because you're like oh shit it's, I was like is she gonna like start crying and run away or something and she goes no she Only was someone who exactly. exactly. She was like, I, "How do I counter this?" She yeah. she fucking comes out after that pause and goes, "Only someone who abandons their hometown could think that," and then fucking runs off. I was like, "Oh, brutal, dude." <laughs> dude. And wrecked. we see how important R-E-K-T. we see how important yeah, we see how important like running away and that theme of you know abandoning like what you once loved is so important to this anime because I mean all the different uh, characters that we've had conflict with uh, so far have kind of been running away from their past you know and i'm not going to elaborate on that because we've we've seen it you know through multiple episodes but it was it was nice to you know see them come back together and uh, yoshino does this super nice thing and she goes to um the uh the producer and says like hey can you put like this in the credits you know this was this woman's old house i think it's important to remember you know why we're not just burning this down you know we we have respect for this house and you know what we're doing here so you know let's give her a nod there. in the credits and and stuff right. like that so that that was nice to see then i thought that was a really good scene better. like the at the mm-hmm. very end when he was like oh does the queen have like some attachment to the house i thought right. that was a really good like sentimental scene and I was as like, well, oh, yeah. when right they on. when they apologized to each other while they were <clears throat> uh, while they were <clears throat> alone during the filming, while they're just standing yeah. there guarding the road, <laughs> I thought it was just <laughs> I, I was imagining like you know when you're a kid and you're having a like quote unquote fight with your friend or whatever, but then yeah. because of like uh, elementary school class, you're forced to be next to that person for some reason, and you're both standing there like super <laughs> uncomfortable, and finally one of them's like. Hey, I'm sorry. And you're like, yeah, me too. And then it's like over. It kind of reminded me of one of those situations and it made me kind of yeah, you know, it, remember the old times and laugh. It's realistic. Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. friends fight. Like yep. no matter how close you are to your friend or even your own family members, you fight. Your wife. <laughs> yeah. Especially like, when you're passionate about something, right? Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. Like you, you're not going to see eye to eye on everything. And in this situation... Both Yoshino and Shiori were like saying they said things that were like not necessarily worded in the nicest way to each other, but they thought about it, had some time away from each other, decided, you know what, I'm going to apologize and make up for it. And it was nice. Well, and and at the end of the day, too, they're both trying to promote this town and make this town a better place. And they kind of realize that. And they're like, maybe they were going about it in different ways. You know, Yoshino is like, I'm, I'm just trying to, you know, make this production, you know, as smooth as possible. Mm-hmm. I want to make the director happy because that's going to bring more people to the town. And Sanai is like, uh, or sorry, Shiori. uh, Shiori's like, I, I want to, I want to preserve the town. I love the town. You know, I have memories at this old house, you know, this old random woman that I met one time, you, you know, was measuring me and, you know, reading me stories. But anyway, um, she, she has fond memories of the town. And so they're, they're both trying to preserve it in their own way. But at the same time, you know, they can come together and realize, Hey, this is a good opportunity for the town. Um, this is what's going to promote tourism. This is what's going to, you know, revitalize the town. And they, realize that they agree to it and there's like let's move on you know let's make the town better and you know we can we can kind of you know do it together and work together so what? everybody who had conflicts <laughs> no and, melodrama yeah, and so, what? exactly <laughs> i and will never submit to you <laughs> especially especially with females right but uh we're not gonna get into that uh but you know at the end of the day we have this with this great scene you know all of them are drinking they're having a good time mm-hmm. resolution is solved um the one last thing i wanted to mention before we move on is uh, the conflict between um maki's dad the vice principal as we learn and her um it's not totally resolved yet but we can see you know he is one of her greatest fans even though he can be the standoffish you know older adult uh male figure in her life but he's filmed her for years in her plays he's gotten in trouble for it he is her number one fan even though they have fought in the past um and you know both of them i can see in the future coming together and you know apologizing doing something along those lines in order to save the relationship so i think we should look forward to that in the future i have to say she was a dope ass tree 
in that video where all oh, yeah, she was swaying in the wind, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, everyone else was just like <laughs> ar- arms out, leaves up, and she was kind of like moving the leaves. I was like, "You're a dope ass tree, you know, for a kid actor." Well, that's uh, pretty good. Rory, Rory, uh, Rory even says like, "Oh, you know, you were you were the tree with the biggest smile," and it's like you see that giant smile yeah, she has in the movie, so and she's like <laughs> she's modeling so herself after uh, modeling herself after the soccer tree and like swaying back and forth in the wind. It's just it's a cute scene. It's mm-hmm. it's it's really good, but it just show it displays her total passion for the art which is awesome mm-hmm. yeah Definitely. i do have a request i uh i want one of the the slide pictures for this youtube video to be the scene where where they're all celebrating and drinking together in the, <laughs> yeah, yeah. In the cabin <clears throat> that, that was a really yeah. good scene because w- drew when you were talking about like all the the resolution and stuff that scene kind of embodies exactly what you were talking yeah. about that whole yeah, scene definitely and i definitely think that I mean, you guys may disagree, but the best part of that scene, the 100% no argument, best part of that scene is that Yoshino falls asleep and has a vice grip on her beer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was Besides cracking that. up. Besides that, I the was, best part was uh, we get Shiori with her hair down and she looked I was going yeah, to say really the exact same thing. Down. The exact same oh, thing. <laughs> oh, it was so good. And she, I, I fucking love Katori and from she's like Love Live. Buzzed. And she, she looked like Katori. And I was just, I was all about it. So She was really funny <laughs> buzzing too. She's like, no, don't leave. Ponytails are nice. They're, they're nice. <laughs> but, but like the, but, different, the difference was definitely noticeable. Yep. Uh, yep, yep. I was laughing when she was like, I wish more people would run away to our town. And then Rudika's like, I should leave. She's like, no, we need you. Don't leave. And she's that. like hugging her. Yeah. <laughs> and like red in the face because, you know, she's like kind of drunk. And then they're like, what mm-hmm. do you think, Yoshino? And they just look over and she's like. <laughs> she's just asleep. That was, dude, that was it. So not, she's not asleep. Only Shiori, <laughs> not mortis. only Shiori's hair, but all the girls' hair in their casual, other than Maki, because Maki doesn't have long hair, but all of their hair in that was, I'm doing like the okay hand emoji right now, like right right there. It's just like, <laughs> a okay. <laughs> definitely, definitely, yeah. That was a cool. good ending to the to the episode. I I think it was a I good agree. way to tie tie up everything that happened and kind of show the resolution between everyone. So they did a good yeah, job. Now they've this, got a uh, production company is wanting to shoot in Monoyama. <laughs> yeah, and blow up and uh, uh, you shrines. know blow up cars and shit. <laughs> yeah, only <laughs> they're like, oh Reasonable. hey, I I heard we can have car chases and blow up shrines. Um, no, not not quite. <laughs> but um, but at least yeah. they're getting the word out, right? Exposure definitely exposure uh whether they want it or not (laughs) Mm -hmm. um so you know definitely a good episode it's continued to surprise me it's gotten better and better i think as it goes on which is a sign of a good show to me at least yeah (laughs) besides that one besides the uh the awkward flash flashback one thing that was Um, nice though was uh, in that in that uh the fight the scene with the burning of the house um they did like the little slow-mo of Maki dressed up as Moe, like running towards the house, and it was like really well animated. Yeah, that was yeah. cool. Yeah, like, where I, they had the I fire. Noted that. Yeah, the fire in the background. We, it was. We know where the budget for that episode yeah. went. All that budget <laughs> went into those that five seconds. They're like, the you guys need there. to draw this so well. All right. <laughs> you need but, to make um, it look like we shot this at 300 frames per second, and we slowed it down. <laughs> All right, <laughs> let's good go episode, ahead. Good episode. Let's go ahead and move on then uh, to our next segment. Now we're into happy hour here. Woo! Drinks are half off, guys. We're all happy. Um, we're all happy. I'm happy. My bomber's I'm done. Drunk. Yeah, I'm repairing. My bomber is gone, morning. guys. My, my bomber is gone. <laughs> um, this was too good. Uh, it's way too good. This beer. I don't. I I can't say enough about this, dude. This beer is so good. Anyways. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> let's let's move on. We got uh Sakurata reset to talk about. I know Rolando, um you have a lot that you want to say. There's a few things you mentioned you want to talk about. Um I hope I remember them. Yeah, me too. Um <laughs> just r- refer to your four pages of notes, man. Yeah. <laughs> um so let's go ahead and <clears throat> you know, I'm going to kind of uh, started out with uh, last week we were talking about that picture that the old man took, and uh, you mentioned that you thought it was you thought it was Soma, right? Yeah, yeah. Turns out it is Soma, as, yeah. as you found out. Yeah, right so you're right. 
Yeah. Um, they <laughs> didn't say it in that. We've been good on those lately. Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah. They didn't say it was her in that episode, but uh, it definitely did look just like her. Um, so we find out that that's actually the same place where, um, uh, what's, K hey. meets, yeah, K meets her for the first time. And they have this interaction where he's just chilling there and she's like, hey, he's like, sorry, I'm not really feeling like talking to people. And she's like, oh, why? He's like, because the sunset's beautiful. Yeah, he's emo. And then basically <laughs> it like the sunset's over and she's like, oh, well, now you have no reason not to talk to me. And then she asked him, like, let's make a promise here and then make a promise basically to meet there again. So personally, I was like, oh, damn, she's definitely coming back. Something's going to happen because you don't show that after she's been dead for like five episodes for no reason. You know, she made the promise, like, let's definitely meet here right. again. Either that or she'll be it'll be another flashback. But something's going to happen with her. <clears throat> what it, did you it, think? It's going to be that? important. Yeah, yeah, I definitely think so. It'll definitely be important. It, like whether it's the he uses the old guy's photo and like fulfills the promise quote unquote and sees her again at that same spot. Um, in particular, because later on in the episode, we see the old guy rips a photo and meets with the young version of the witch we met last episode. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it seems like she understands what's going on a little bit. So like, cause I'm she can see the future. Yeah. I'm wondering if it, it, it just has to do with her future ab seeing abilities and like because like she they do have a plan together to mm -hmm. like do something, do something. Yeah. Um, She's like, it still will work out and then give these photos to Kay. Oh, yeah. man, it's super cryptic, I must say. And so like whether Somo is able to, you know, have a similar s meeting with Kay there or if like. This is just something I've been thinking about, but like maybe Soma somehow is a similar entity to the witch. Like she maybe she has a similar ability or not. Mm. Like who knows? But um And she had the MacGuffin, so she did. She could be she, like she could be God controlling the powers, yeah. Yeah. Um what I do want to talk about this episode is um a couple things. So, like, going back to last week, they talk about the straw man thought experiment, and I'll just briefly brush upon that. And basically, the straw man thought experiment is guy gets hit by lightning. Sorry, straw man. Swamp man. Swamp man, yeah. <laughs> um, guy, gets, guy gets hit by um, lightning by a swamp, dies. Lightning strikes at the same time. A new man is created. In Same appearance, personality, by that swamp, in the swamp. Um, so, like, obviously no one's there to observe it. They don't know that this thing happened, so they just think it's, assume it's the same guy, right? And so we've got two similar things. Actually, as I was watching the episode, a third similar situation came up to this swamp man. So first we've got Haruki, and she talks to Kay and is just like, hey, if I ever lose my power because, you know, Oka Eri wanted to seal away Haruki's reset ability. She's like, mm -hmm. if I lose my power, would our relationship change? She says that to Kay. And he's like, you know what? I don't really know. Yeah. And so like And then she th says, Oh, I'll never lose it. And I'm like, Well, she's gonna lose it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you know, triggering those flags. <laughs> yeah, those um, red flags. She she's like So in a sense, if you think about it, like her losing her power would be kind of like a death. And then she has the same appearance and personality. She just doesn't have the power. She's born again as like a powerless Haruki. So technically, you know, you don't really know that she's a different person other than the fact that she doesn't have this reset ability. But to mm -hmm. Kay, who knows and honestly, like she is his complement because like they have complementary powers. Like mm -hmm. for him, it's different because like he's observing this difference and there's this, you know... In, if you if, if I want to bring in like theoretical physics into this, I don't oh want to bore everybody. Oh God. But like, oh God, <laughs> <laughs> I'll try to understand. <laughs> um, a lot of things that change with um theoretical physics is like things will change depending on whether something is observed or not, and that's kind of what gets covered in that philosophical question of if a tree falls in the woods and no one's there to hear mm -hmm. it, does it make a sound? Yes, right. physically, technically. It makes a sound. 
Sound, you know, well, like does it though? It does. It just vibrates the sound waves. The air, but the air, air pressure the, moves. Vibrates the air. It vibrates. It creates sound. That's what. But sound if there's is. no, if there's no ear to pick it up, can you call it sound? You're the sound guy. Yes. <laughs> It's okay. not a subjective right. thing. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just trying to throw random shit out there. It's uh, subjective. If I don't hear it, it doesn't exist as sound. Or... All right, um, continue. <laughs> now, whether something is heard or not, is that's the subjective thing. But, like, you know, the physical phenomenon of sound does occur. Um, mm. That's the philosophical question behind that, though. Like, yes, the physical phenomenon occurs, but, like, no one's there to hear it, quote unquote. That is the subjective thing, and that's where all that philosophy stuff goes on, Bullshit. blah, blah, But yeah, 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 there's this idea in like theoretical physics that when you observe something, that changes the outcome, and um, that's kind of similar to Kay's situation here. Like He can observe this difference if Haruki loses her power, and that changes their relationship, right? Mm -hmm. Whereas like a different person that doesn't know Haruki as well doesn't know she has this reset ability. She's no different to them whatsoever, right? Or if she, they know she has it, but they don't use it in the same way Kay does. She's right. no different. It's like, well, I mean, you're the same person. You just don't have that power anymore. Yeah. Their relationships so. don't change. Exactly. And then, like, a similar thing is, like, you have Oka Eri, who we find out in middle school, her name was Fujikawa Eri. Mm -hmm. And um, she had, like, this abusive father that would, like, beat her and shit. Just um, for no reason. Yeah. Good or bad. Good or Just bad. Either. And Kay is actually the one that tells her, like, what's your mother's maiden name? She's like, Oka. He's like, well, I'm going to call you Oka Eri. And he kind of references that joke we talked about last week. He's like, whether this is like some sick, like twist of fate or not, like, and how it doesn't fit you whatsoever. Like, it's kind of because like he mentions like you, I will call you Oka Eri, which like, oh, like, yeah, like Oka Eri, like, well, like, welcome back. Welcome home um is like kind of like this weird change and that's honestly where airy changes her personality she goes from this like meek weak timid girl to this aggressive villain villain character yeah, with red and eyes. so like that itself is like a change in it mm -hmm. like where she her fujikawa airy dies quote unquote and then oka airy is born and is this person with at first the same appearance and personality. And then that changes when she decides to go all in and be like, I'm going to be different. I'm going to, you know, dress as all punk girl with like puts on colored another, contacts. Another swamp man. Yeah. And so like yeah. she, like, and essentially it's another swamp man, but whether like her personality really changes or not, it's, it's up to question. Cause right. it's like, it could obviously be a, it could her be a internal thing. personality or if yeah. she's just, and she's just showing it now, or yeah, exactly like what you said. Drew, um, you might like this. It could be her persona. Um, <laughs> <laughs> persona. Persona. Um, <laughs> but yeah, there is that. And then we get the situation later where, um, uh, let me look in my notes where I wrote this. Like, there's a situation where I feel like Kay falls into this situation as well. What I like about this show is that it's starting to, like, take ideas that you they introduce before and like mm -hmm. expand upon it whether yeah. whether or not you pick up on it like they're putting it out there so um let me find this um, one thing i haven't noticed them coming back to is the robotics yeah. thing they kind of brought that up and then it disappeared and i'm wondering if they're going to bring that whole like whole thing back or if that was just a way to describe the two's relationship k and haruki uh, you know, they, um, there so, was I'm just, something that I'm that I do remember writing. I have to find it <laughs> in this episode. In this episode, I think it was at the uh, end of the episode. Um, so like K, like to Oka, Ari, she's like, oh, like he he was like so cold hearted and like hypo you know, like that hypocrite, um, character. He's like sinister, self centered. Not he wasn't the hypocrite back then that he is now that she sees him as so like mm -hmm. he was more self-centered and like back to that description of someone that's truly righteous you know versus a hypocrite before she was like yeah he's so like self like selfish and and stuff and then now she sees him as weak because he's actually doing things differently and like 
pulling back on like the stuff he did, especially with her like denying her existence as Fujikawa Eri. That in itself is like his character kind of whether it shifts or not is like a different character in itself, like a different swamp man um, that like she wants to destroy because like she sees like, oh, it's different than what I thought. And obviously it's all coming right. down to perspective um, is what basically this whole swamp man thing is about. Mm hmm. And um, because he also says, I can't accept the me of two years ago or whatever. Right. So, and clearly, um, yeah, it's all about like this rent, like these different, these ideas of perspective and like born again. And then we've got this whole thing with Oka's power Christian. that like, I don't really want to get into because like, there's so much to it. But basically mm -hmm. at the end, um, there's so many traps being set up and like, people falling into them and i'm just like yelling at the screen like you guys are falling into <laughs> all these traps like yeah. k falls into oka's trap oka mm -hmm. i think is falling into k's trap here mm -hmm. at the end where so. she um is going to use her power which one of her weaknesses is is you can she can only use one aspect of her power um right. at a time Either on to a make person for someone forget or have a false memory yeah and yeah. so like she's gonna I implant so. this false memory on haruki mm -hmm. so that it erases her uh, like effect of forgetting how to use her her reset ability. I think ability. it's going to end up being a double trap though, because yeah. his trap was to get her to use it, but then he wasn't expecting her to like. It seems like she's going to create a memory of him dying off the side of the the building. That's what it seems like it's going to, like him falling I, and dying yeah. or something. That, and so that's, it's like good maybe that'll Herb cripple point. Haruki. And so I, think, I wonder if it's going to be like so. some weird double, you know, situation. Right. I think I think that's true because. Um, in particular, what I thought was it's, it's going back to your question about the robotics thing. I thought that the idea to overcome her weakness and her ability was that she was going to um, give Harky some false memory that's related to her zeroth rule, like the zeroth robotics rule that, you know, mm -hmm. Harky's rule was she will only use her power, you know, like in related to like how K like commands her. Right. Right. Um, and like she's only going to use it for him, and I have a feeling whether it's if she your has idea, a memory of him being dead or whatever, whether it's that or whether she um, has some memory where like she won't listen to him anymore, like whether she affects that zeroth rule memory or not, mm -hmm. because like in the preview we have Harky saying, "I will not I reset," right? I refuse to reset. So I kind of saw that as if she gives her this memory of him dying. She's going, I won't reset because Kay didn't tell me to, but then that like could be, it yeah, could yeah. come up to you too, where he comes and says reset. And she's like, I have this memory of you dying. You could be fake. I'm not going to reset. And then like gives her this weird, like, you know, I don't know what to do. Kind of, <laughs> kind of complex Maybe. or whatever. So I can see it that, uh, I was more along of the lines of, uh, that way I can see it. <laughs> Sorry. I'm getting a little drunk. <laughs> um, I can, <laughs> I kind of saw it along the lines of um, she erases that rule. And so like she is making it so that Haruki chooses to reset or not, or she makes it so that um, she remembers it differently and that Kay can't tell her to do anything mm -hmm. or right. something like that. Something. Yeah. It's definitely the, the show is getting complex and I think next episode is going to be definitely going to bring a lot of stuff to the show. That's going to, Kind of, I think next episode's gonna complement this one really well, and it's gonna just push it along and answer a lot of questions, but then add more questions along with it. Because that Soma thing is still like really, really heavy. I'm like, what, what's going on with her and all that? So, anyways, I'm really liking the show, dude. I'm digging yeah. the show a lot. Um, but let's go ahead and move on. Uh, we we don't have too much time here. I know we want to talk a little bit about Attack on Titan. There isn't too much to talk about. Um, I'll let Drew talk about that episode. Let's make, let's give Drew, a, uh, you know, a little minute here to talk. Cause we just talked for so long. Uh, you know, you have any notes on attack on Titan that you want to mention? Yeah. It's like a attack on Titan is good. Um, kind of a filler, not a filler, but basically a filler episode where we mm -hmm. get, you know, set, set up for the next episode. Um, we know that bear told, um, and Reiner make it away with Ymir as well as Aaron, 
and they kind of run off um, without anybody being able to follow them. Uh, most of the scouts uh, on the wall are injured or don't have gear or whatever it happens to be. So they're kind of, you know, waiting for backup um, with Levi and the crew to come and, you know, give them horses, give them uh, 3D maneuver gear, all that good stuff. Uh, one scene I wanted to point out was the Air, uh, Irwin and uh, Pix's meeting. Um, you know, they kind of talk about what's going on in the situation. Uh, Pixis is always a dope character. He's a fucking drunk, but uh, he's tight. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, he Mikasa kind of gets triggered that no one went after Aaron, but it's just like, you know, Ar- Armin pulling her back to reality no and one saying, could. you know, yeah, it's like it, we didn't have horses, blah, blah, blah. Um, That's actually what I the, said when when that happened. <laughs> I'm just like, they don't have fucking horses. Are you crazy? Yeah, yeah. So what are they going to do? Mean, use their we, fuel to fly along for <laughs> ten miles? And <laughs> and we got we got the flashback, you know, of the uh, Armin, Mikasa, and Aaron, you know, fighting the bullies, and you know them being a squad, and Hans being there, um, and kind of promoting that and stuff. So it's kind of a theme that they leave us with, you know. Um, Aaron is always leaving his two friends, so mm-hmm. in this case, you know, he's leaving them to be kidnapped. Uh, but before, you know, he's leaving them, and you know that he's becoming a titan. Um, and you know, we have several instances of him, you know, abandoning, not abandoning, but you know, kind of, you know, moving Running on from on the other own. two being and an then idiot. being kind of, yeah. <laughs> and, and then being in his shadow and, and all that good stuff. Um, so that was, that was kind of good to see. And then we see Hans, you know, pulling him back together and giving him words of inspiration, you know, don't give up on him. He's a fighter. He's a fucking idiot, but you know, he does these things because he's passionate mm-hmm. and, uh, because he loves you guys and he wants to, you know, figure out, you know, the mission history behind the titans and you know what's going on with he's that. gonna so die that was, dude 100 dude that's exactly he's, what I, I was thinking when he was saying i'll do anything to bring back those peaceful times i'm like you're dead goodbye i was you're just dead. like you're, you're giving yourself too much development right now he's like i'm yeah. gonna go with you guys there was like you're dead dude yeah. you are going to die yeah, yeah 100 dude don't kill hans dude, <laughs> dude hans he's is giving, fucking he's tight, triggering dude. these death flags on his own dude. so <laughs> many so many death flags he was like i however long it takes for me to bring that back those peaceful times but i need all three of you there i'm like dude yeah you're dead you're dead dude you shouldn't have said that i'm you're gonna dead. i'm gonna cry if hans dies dude hans you're gonna cry tight, then dude. you're gonna cry man, man. you need to don't, pour one don't out put that him. evil on me don't put that evil on me um uh, but that's yeah. that's really all i wanted to say about attack on titan that's really all that happened i don't know what if you i have one note anything. when they were so it, they they kind of they say they're in the forest, right? And then the final cut scene or whatever, <clears throat> um, or the, the next episode preview, mm-hmm. they show them in the, or sorry, at the end of the episode, Aaron wakes up and they're in the forest. It's him, Ymir, uh, Reiner and Bertolt. And, uh, they show the four of them and then it cuts into the next episode and it continues to show the four of them. I'm curious what happened to that random person that, yeah, Bertolt what the fuck? <laughs> or ate. Bertolt, He's dead. He, he grabbed your mirror and he ate you. the random guy. Yeah, did he really? He like, he he saved your mirror and he's like, oh, I'm just going to eat you? Like, just, that's <laughs> fucked tight, up, dude. dude. That's tight, fucked tight, up. Tight, dude. Uh, tight, dude. Titan, dude. Titan. Titan, yeah. dude. Um, Titan. I think next episode will be, it'll add more to the story. I think it'll be a really Definitely. intriguing episode uh, compared to this one. This one was kind of like, yeah. let's, can it like you said, it was kind of filler. It wasn't quite filler. Like, you know, random, hey, let's go watch this person sell stuff at a store shop like they do in Naruto. But um, yeah. it, it was filler. <laughs> it's set up. Um, the next... Yeah, the next episode is definitely going to be story and interesting. But um, yeah, it should be good. You know. They don't have enough episodes to play around with to give too many of these type of episodes. Exactly. So. Yeah. Yeah. Well, now we're getting an episode of Aaron and Reiner yelling at each other. Yeah. <laughs> Why did you do this? Uh. But let's but hope it's uh, it's pretty. Good, it'll be but. good. I I have faith, yeah. dude. I have faith it'll be good, and your favorite guy is gonna die. Um, <laughs> but uh, Rip you know, Hans. I de- uh, you know I think that's all we have today for. Uh, Episode eight, I'm pretty sure. Um, I just want to mention a couple things before we end. We're thinking of coming out with some new content um, for for uh, our YouTube channel. Um, it won't necessarily be related to the you know the podcast exactly the the anime and beer kind of aspect, but we're gonna come out with some new things. So look out for an episode of the three of us talking about what kind of content we might come out with. We're gonna definitely look out for any of any feedback that you guys. Uh, have on what we mentioned in that episode um what else was there i think that oh uh we'll probably put a blog post out for it 
And then, um, oh, it's the end of the episode, Drew. How are you feeling you, you, about that beer? You know, you feel like uh, you don't quite want to finish it or? Oh, I finished it. You I finished mean, it, it was. It was it was more drinkable than I thought it would be, um, but you know definitely definitely check out this new English Brewing Co. Zumbar Chocolate Coffee Imperial Stout. It was it was tasty even for a guy who doesn't like stouts that much. Um, I drank the whole thing and I'm feeling uh, pretty toasted. So uh, <laughs> that's good. You know, yeah, I, th- I think we all are. One, <laughs> I mean, we'll, one uh, one bomber will do you. So yeah, definitely. <laughs> Alex, will. not really an IPA guy. He liked your IPA last I week. Did. You're not a stout guy. You yeah. like we're converting each other, dude. We're converting. <laughs> <That's> good. <laughs> we're evolving. We're evolving, boys. Definitely. If you so, if anyways, if you guys want to check out us, uh, check us out some more. Uh, pardon my misspeak there. Uh, <laughs> definitely check out our WordPress at animeondraft.wordpress.com. Uh, you can also find us on Twitter at Anime on Draft and as always YouTube at Anime on Draft. Um, so if you just type YouTube Anime on Draft, all one word, you'll find all of our episodes there and not, you'll find the new content. Well, I type it all one word and it brings <laughs> it up, but you could type it not all one word. <laughs> Anyways, you'll find our episodes there um, and then we'll be hopefully putting out some new content. So definitely keep an eye out. Uh, Speaking thanks, of the guys. new content also on the website, we've got you know, the blogging stuff that we talked about last week. And then mm-hmm. also, um, uh, we may or may not have an episode next week. It depends, but, um, I will personally be out of town, whether these guys want to do without me or do it delayed or just skip it all together is up to the group. We'll find out. L- look so. for uh, social media. We'll be posting about mm-hmm. it if we're going to have an episode. And if we end up not having an episode, we'll do a, a two for, uh, the, the week after. So mm-hmm. look forward to that. Cool. All right, guys, I want to thank everybody for listening today. Um, and uh, I know I had fun with this episode, especially considering how strong this beer was. Uh, <laughs> but thanks for listening. And, you know, have a good day, everyone. Yay. Catch you next time, boys. The Serpents. <laughs> the Serpents. <laughs>